Today we are painting Howard Quartz from the ABC Warriors starter set. Increase the piece. Can I paint a brain? Let's find out. Right, so Howard Quartz, before we get into the painting and all the fun stuff, he was the human CEO of Quartz Industries and he drove the production of the first war droids despite their struggling to tell friend from foe. A terrorist incident resulted in the destruction of 90% of his body and it was happened to be a rogue Hammerstein that caused the damage. Quartz had himself reconstructed as a robot cyborg so he could continue his business practices for centuries to come it is a great little model look at it just look at it he's uh his brain uh, jar on the top that's what we're gonna call it brain jar it uh looks like a little bowler hat in my opinion and he's got his little umbrella and the chess piece is just a, a entire set of telephones so he can take business calls wherever he is he's so cool so as you would have seen he started off with an all black base prime and some real dodgy priming in the vents at the back there, which luckily this silver host base coat is going to cover up quite nicely. I am slapping it on thick. I'm using my trusty old beaten up brush that I usually use for terrain. But it also acts as a great little heavy dry brusher. It really gets the paint where I need it to go. I'm just absolutely covering the whole thing. I know he's going to be shiny at the end of the day, so we might as well cover him up. I only want the real deep recesses to stay dark black. So we're going to make sure we heavily hit all of this. With this model, I'm going to be actually complete on all the models in the starter set. I just got the terrain piece left to do and the anvil, which I'm not going to do a video for the anvil. <laughs> the terrain I will, but not the anvil. Then uh, once that's done, I can hopefully try and do some of the starter scenarios once I've got some space in my gaming room again. And we will also open up the second starter set box that I got and try and do some alternative paint schemes for the channel. See what that looks like. And if I'm lucky, maybe I'll have a few more ABC Warriors on the painting desk soon. Hopefully soon at least. You know how it is, it's that time of year, tax season's it. we got to make sure i got money for taxes. Figures we'll have to wait for a little while. Next step is very similar to the Hammerstein units. I grabbed the Telesar Blue and did a 50-50 mix with the paint thinner. Now I'm going to heavily wash this all over the model. Just making sure I hit everywhere. This is a beautiful color when it's uh, watered down. I'm starting to think I could have gone heavier on my Hammersteins with the plasmatic bolt version. So maybe my next Hammerstein squad will be a darker blue compared to the first unit. It'll make them stand out enough that they look different. But there's also a bit of me that wants to do some silly paint scheme on them, like bright red, bright yellow, bright orange bright green, you know, something different that you're not going to see in everybody else's Hammersteins. Let me know in the comments, what color should I paint the Hammersteins? I also want to do the bronzy orange brown Hammersteins that you see in the older, like, Robuster strips of ABC Warriors, or similar to the Sylvester Stallone ABC Warrior in the movie Judge Dredd that I absolutely adored that movie and that ABC Warrior I think looks cool as hell so we might have to even try and make him. Depends how many <laughs> how many Hammersteins I can get my hands onto. The more I can get hold of the more I'm going to just keep painting them in silly colours and creating videos for you guys. Right, I think I've got everything that needs to be covered. I do apologise for the blurry view. For some reason my camera locked onto my hand. But you get the idea, I'm covering the entire model, making sure all the shadowed areas are full of this blue colour. Right, that should be good. Let's clean up the brush after, oh, that was a bit heavy of me. We'll clear that mess up and be back in a minute. Now the artwork I'm using as reference, which will pop up now has his brain floating in what looks like an orangey jar. So we're going to hit it up with Nasdrag Yellow as the base coat. 
covered the entire brain dome. This should give me the base area to work off and build up the brain section on. I have no idea how to do the brain. I've never done a brain before. That's a very weird sentence to say out loud. But yeah, I've never painted a brain before, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. I am completely winging this. I'm hoping it comes out well. You can be the judge at the end, but I grabbed the Telazar blue again, using it neat straight from the bottle, just putting it on his eye lens. Very quick, very simple step whilst his brain box is drying up. Then I'm just fixing a few areas. I want his phone to be bright blue. I was looking at the picture. Everybody seems to do his phones differently. Warlord Games colored it one way. The old Robuster artwork for him had it a different way. And then the artwork I'm using has it a different way. I'm just following the artwork that is in front of me. That makes the most sense. It's there. I can see it. I'm copying it. So next was the Griffhound Orange for obviously the orange phone. We are going to quickly rattle through these phones. They are literally just a cylinder on his chest. They aren't anything exciting. He can pick them up and talk to his business people, sell stocks and shares, trade weapons of mass destruction. I, This guy is a piece of work. He, I don't know, in a previous life, he probably owned Amazon. <laughs> he, uh, I don't know. He's just a crazy little character. I have not read Robusters. I think that's where he's from. Or the... Uh, invasion story strips so i'm gonna have to try and find them because i believe they introduced this character a lot more and obviously the beginnings of the abc warriors is created in those comics in case you missed it i grabbed the abaddon black and i'm just doing this fine wire it's a very simple step I'm trying to make sure i'm nice and clean i don't want to mess up the blue and silver that i've got down so i'm just going to take my time work my way around i probably don't know will i do the umbrella handle should i do it should i uh i don't know yeah okay we'll do the umbrella handle i don't know why i'm talking as if i don't know what i did i painted this model already i'm already looking at the finished piece i should know what i did I don't, it's like I've not actually remembered what I did whilst painting this and I'm doing the voiceover and learning what I did at the same speed that you're watching me doing it. But once again, taking my time, nice and patient, go around the model, make sure I'm not messing anything up, which I'm pretty good at doing. But once again, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this. I think we discuss it quite a lot. I am a tabletop painter. I'm not here to win awards. I'm here to show you how, what kind of an effect you can get with nice, easy steps to follow. I'm pretty happy with how this model turns out. Hopefully you will be too at the end of the video. But yeah, you want something fancier, go watch somebody else, okay? If you just want quick and dirty and think, hey, I can do that and get some paint on my models, you're on the right channel. But at the same time, I want to see your results. So make sure you are dropping any links or hit me up on social media. Make sure you tag me with Adventures with Peps. Also, if you're messing around doing stuff, you might as well hit that like, subscribe buttons. You've been here long enough now. If you've watched this far in, we're what, 10 minutes in? You're obviously getting some form of enjoyment from me. No idea what it is, but if you're enjoying the video, come on, hit that button doesn't cost you anything. It's a little freebie. Put a smile on my face. And then grabbed, uh, what have I talked about? Orc Flesh. We did the green phone. And then I Aiden Yellow for the yellow phone. Look at that. He's looking like a weird child's piano. I think that's the only way I can describe it. He is pretty bright and colourful, considering he is a warmonger man of profits and then we finish up his telephones with the flesh terror red my go-to red this is probably one of my most used paints mainly because of my necron forces but it just goes on so well it's such a nice bright color 
I really enjoy painting with it. But we're on the last phone. I've got to make sure I don't mess this up too badly. Also seems to have more phone on display than the other ones, but I think we are there with the chest. So I haven't played a game yet. Put my hands up to that one. But this model does intrigue me. He has built-in blasters. He's got a pair of them that he can shoot away with. He also has a built-in missile rack for shooting people with. He is crazy. He increases the shoot value of robots around him, but he also decreases their resistance, which uh, means that he can sell more of them because they break down. They seem very effective, but they will break quite easily. Now we are doing the bit that terrified me the most, the brain in the jar. So I picked more Fang Brown. My thought process being that you should see me paint a blurry picture. Uh, uh, also acts as a good base point. It's going to cover that metallic quite nicely. Luckily I realised what I was doing. And that I was actually recording for other people and not just for my own enjoyment. But yeah, I'm just going around I'm making like a bubble cloud would probably be the best way to describe it. A weird thought bubble that you draw at high school when you were doodling in art class. It now looks like he's got this really bad toupee on his head. But that should allow us to do some flesh colours in a little bit. Now, whoever painted the one in the Warlord Games book... He did an absolute masterclass. If I find out it's a transfer, I'll be disappointed. But I'm really impressed with the paint job they did on the brain. I cannot duplicate that with my skill set. I'm not even going to attempt to. I will do the best that I can do with my abilities. And hopefully I can inspire you to paint some brain as well. We then moved on to the Luxion Purple. And I'm just going to do his umbrella. It was a bit of me that wanted to go red, but I used the red on the phone. I didn't want to have the same color popping up too much because that would just ruin the tone. It was, I could have gone blue, but I've got plenty of blue on the model already. So purple seemed like a good mix to go with. So we are about halfway through the model now. We're going to go back to the brain now that everything's dried up and we're using a rack of flesh. And what I'm going to try and do is just make some fat C's and tubes, I guess, and just slowly try and make some brain wiggles, if that's even a thing. There's going to be another layer of color going on top to make more details, so this is purely just getting some color down. I want the brown to be the darkest part of the brain. I have no idea what I'm doing, as you could probably tell. I'm just splodging it down. I'm not even looking at a picture of a brain whilst doing this. I'm just doing what I think seems right. And then we'll go from there. So, if I remember biology well enough, the brain has this big-ass crease down the middle of it, separating the left lobe from the right lobe. So we did that. In my brain and then I grab the administratum gray and we're going to do the base with that whilst the brain is drying up. It's not a very fun step so we'll skip forward a little bit. With the base now complete I grab the pallid witch flesh and I try to pick out areas of the brain that I think would be raised. This is now the third color going down and probably the last don't want to go overboard. I'm just doing weird squiggles that I think make sense and that kind of give the impression of a brain from a distance. Like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just playing it by ear. Just doing these squiggles. I'm putting them where I think they make sense to me. I'm curving them around each other, leaving gaps so you can see the brown and the, uh, the darker flesh tone underneath. Yeah, I'm not doing anything special. I don't have the secret sauce on how to paint brains. 
just doing what I think feels right and what I think should look right at the end of the process. But yeah, as you can see, it's just wobbly wiggles. Connect the odd ones together. Try and have them curving in and out. Adds depth to the model. It's very hard. Like, the idea of a brain in a jar and painting that is just mind-numbing. Took me the better part of a week to even work up the courage to attempt it. It actually proper put me off wanting to paint the model. And I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. I think you can see that the squiggles are there and it's adding some depth to the model. I do like it. I probably could have been braver and gone another shade lighter and added even more squiggles in. But I think I'm happy. I'm happy with where I got it. Up next comes the Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss. Now, in the pictures of him, he is Mr. Shiny Pants. But at the same time, I wanted to break up the silver paneling. There's a lot, and I don't want him blending in with the Hammerstein. So I start slapping his on, and you know what? I've gone too heavy. Looking at it, I can tell I wiped my brush clean. Gotta accept that I've gone too heavy on this first shoulder. We're going to have to clean it up. I'm going to use my finger for that. This is, I know, sacrilege. People are going to look at this and be like, what are you doing? doing but i knocked it right back to the silver which was easy to do because luckily metallic paints wipe away quite cleanly and then use the overflow that was in that recess to flood back across the shoulder pad then i use my finger again to knock it back and lighten it up and without having to load my brush again i was able to do the second shoulder pad and i was able to do it pretty much the same way i just covered it and then I used my finger to lighten it up. And it is quick dab, dab, dab. You could probably use a cotton bud if you didn't want to use your finger. I'm just not that precious about my fingers. So that was it. I just wanted to add a little pop of color where there isn't normally any. And then I used it to also pick out some random details that are on the model. So he's got this box grill in the front. There's some... I think the technical term is filigree. I don't know. Maybe it's not. There's some banding going around his bodysuit. I'm just going to pick out in this armor gloss as well. It just adds a little bit of detailing without having to do anything too fancy. And then we are back to the brain for hopefully the last point. Fingers crossed. This is where we work out if this is going to work or I just wasted an entire evening painting a brain. I grabbed the contrast I aid in yellow. I also used some paint thinner once again. Probably, I'm trying to think, a three to one ratio of one thinner to three paint. And then I splodged it over the brain. I did make sure to make the paint was fully dry. I wasn't going to risk running and I just cover it all. So at this point that the Nasdreg yellow was probably the wrong choice. It's too dark. I probably could have made a better choice there. It's not the end of the world. I would like to go back at a future date and probably fix up and brighten the under yellow. But you know what? That isn't bad. I'm hoping that when it dries, it will look a bit more detailed right now it looks like the yellow is covering everything but you can tell there's something in the murky brain bowl floating around so that's i'm happy with it i then grab the nun oil i am not going to flood the model don't worry guys i'm instead just picking out some areas that i think could use a little enhancement so around the eye lens i darken it down and then as you can see i'm just actually paying attention and only putting it in certain areas some areas where there's piping or if i feel it needs a little bit of extra shadow but to be honest we're pretty much there so one quick twirl with it on the base still what we will do is let this fully dry up and then i'll grab some glamour shots for you there you go i hope you enjoyed hope i've inspired you enough to tackle this let me know what you think 
Did I succeed at the brain? Did I waste my time? Should I have just done it a solid colour? Let me know. Anyway, as always, cheers for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video soon. Boy, boy.